I don't think that the lineup as it is can, can continue. Uh, obviously, Nick Nick uh, Robertson was called up today. I think uh, who was called up yesterday? It was like Christian Rubens and somebody Brandon else. Manel. And basically yeah. what they're doing when they do that is to fill out their cap space so they can maximize their LTIR space, which tells me they're working on something. Now, Fridge this morning uh, in 32 Thoughts kind of mentioned that they have called Dallas about John Klingberg. He threw out JT Miller as a possibility as well. We know that Vancouver... Uh, they have called Vancouver, but from what we've heard, it's been more Luke Shen related than um, than uh, 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 JT Miller related. It would be amazing for the Leafs to get JT Miller, who, by the way, had two goals and two assists last night. Price would be In high. The seven seven goal drubbing of Calgary, right? Yeah, Jeez. what was yeah. that? What was yeah. that? Calgary with a ten game winning streak snapped. Insane. The, the highlights are crazy too. Um, mm-hmm. But the the uh, you know I, I, I'm the JT Miller thing seems like less of a possibility. Uh, I still feel like they want defensemen. I think Klingberg they do. would be incredible. Because he, we didn't, we didn't he's think like that, another Morgan Riley. But we didn't think that was possible like uh, two weeks ago. And then Muzzin going out now opens up that possibility. So if, if Klingberg is now on the board... I think what else is, you know, if it's Klingberg plus something else that's smaller, it just opens up everything. Who wants to play a fun game called reckless theories? <laughs> hmm? So what? Nick Robertson called up today. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a couple ways to look at this. Number one, why are they going out and spending a fortune on JT Miller uh, when they haven't even seen what they have here with Nick, Nick Robertson, Robertson. Nicky Bob. So he's about to get a big audition and I got to imagine they're calling him up. They're not calling him up to play fourth line, but they're calling him up great in the AHL, Steve. So he didn't have a good start. He got injured and he's come back and been good recently. He's been good. Um, You call him up to put him with JT and Nylander and nothing else. Like uh, maybe you give him a look on the third line, but I, I think he's there for a big role because if you're going to go out and spend uh, you better do it knowing that you have no other options. <laughs> it, so that's practical, fun, optimistic option. Mm-hmm. You, you, want, you want dumb chaos option? You know who plays for the Dallas Stars? Jason Robertson, next brother. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How close to done is Nick Robertson for John Klingberg? But then Klingberg's up at the end of the year. So you're giving up Robertson. Oh, I didn't say it was a good deal. (laughs) Also, here's the problem. (laughs) Klingberg is a great puck mover, but he brings you none of the things that you're missing with Jake Muzzin. You have Klingberg, a developing Klingberg in Sandine. We'll see if he's better or worse than Klingberg. I don't know. Then you got Morgan Riley, who's a great puck mover as well. TJ Brody, underrated uh, as a puck mover. Really, really good. Yeah. You need snarl. You need toughness. I'm not really sure. Um, I, listen, it doesn't make them worse. Klingberg's a great defenseman, but right. uh, I, I don't know if it's what they need. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's sort of, it just seems like, okay, well, we got another guy who is devastating at one end of the ice and questionable at the, on the defensive end. That's, I, I don't think they need more of that. That's an odd, odd one. I think, them. I don't think uh, saying Klingberg's questionable at the defensive end is correct. Also, I like uh, Sandine as a as a developing Klingberg, as a great assessment of who he is. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, um, I mean, well, and, it's, and he's got the patented high shot from the point too. That was yeah. Jeff Merrick used to always hammer that home. Uh, Klingberg, when he fires it on, the puck is way up here, mm-hmm. so friggin' duck. Um, and <laughs> but, Sandine's got a little bit of that. So we need another Tyson is... Berry. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, that's no. That was low directly at the shin pad. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> if enough. you add Klingberg, is an improvement on the team. Like, is that, is yes. that shouldn't that just be how we're looking at it? Like, if you add this piece, it does the team get better? And I think it does. Does it make the them least- a stronger pair of scissors? Potentially, even a pair of scissors that cuts rock. You know, like, does that help you? Does that help you win one more playoff game? Listen, I think having John Klingberg on your lineup does do that. Jesse, and that's the, I, that's the lens I'm looking through. I have to disagree with you, Jesse. John Klingberg is awful on defense. It's, <laughs> he's, all, he's just not good. This is yeah. not what this team needs. And, and people are like, well, Damon Severson looks good. Damon Severson is the second coming of Jake Gardner. If you want that, fine. I like Jake Gardner, too. But I don't think it's what they need. I mean, like, right. honestly, honestly. 
I mean, if the if the price for Sherratt wasn't so high, like Sherratt to me is worth like a seventh rounder. For some reason, everybody's like, well, it's going to be first first overall pick. I don't I don't see that. That's not that doesn't make sense to me. But you right. need somebody who is going to bring what Jake Muzzin didn't bring because even with Jake Muzzin in the lineup, you needed more of what Jake Muzzin brought. Yeah. I, I like Klingberg is objectively of the top four defensemen on on Dallas, Suter, Heiskinen, Lindell, Klingberg. He is the worst by a mile. By a mile. He's he is he's spectacular on the power play, spectacular puck mover. Not Uh-oh. the guy you need for the Leafs, who already play shaky defense on certain nights, except for last night. Uh oh. Guys, uh, f- what? Shit. what? My my condition's acting up. What is it? My my condition where Oh no, Mark Giordano. Where is Mark Giordano? Figure into this conversation. Oh, when are we going to have a conversation about my paisan? I don't. I There's don't somebody disagree. who's not playing too well this season. Like right, that's, that's why he's cheap. Oh, that's what I've been out of Seattle. <laughs> he, he and Ron Francis had a call, I think, yesterday, and and they are going to explore the trade market, which means he's getting traded. Yeah, that's, also, that's somebody you do right on. by. Is it is it is that not like yes, if you're a GM is. in the National Hockey League, you do right by Mark Giordano. You send him out of there to a contender. Like yeah. just do that. It just kind of I mean, sucks that like he they claimed him for no reason and made him captain for no reason, and then now they're trading their captain 40 games in. That sucks. Man. Like I honestly, I'm telling you guys, they fucked up. They fucked that draft up. They they were terrible. It was terrible. I do terrible. I do think Seattle is an interesting team to look at if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. Kyle Dubas, you know, we, I think we already said this point. He's obviously willing to get creative. And with an expansion team that is still very raw in a lot of ways, um, there's a lot of fun wiggle room there. And I got to wonder what's going on. You know, uh, like just lesser things like Nick Robertson's coming up. Is Engvall scratched? Is he going to get waived? No. Is he going to get traded? If he does sneak through waivers, do they put him in the minors? Because his contract is almost 100% variable. Mm-hmm. But is that what they need right now? Because they actually need to be closer to the cap in order to get the most benefit out of LTIR. Yeah. You know, there's the also, show. Engvall's I, I, been fine. Like, he's been fine, but someone's got to go. He's someone's been got to get out of the lineup. Been nice. It's been yeah. nice that he's been mean. I. But, but do you wait, drop Kerfoot to the do you drop who do you drop to the fourth line? Uh Kerf to the third line, I would think. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. But then who drops off the third line? I don't know. Well, it might be McKay if he had the poops. And, and Kerfoot played on the oh, third line uh last night, did he not? He did. He did. Yeah. Uh, at least he started there. And then, you know, as the game goes, there's a yeah. little bit of they shift. shuffling. But there's this great show. Um, I don't know if you heard of it. Uh the Chris Johnston show. Ah, <laughs> where, where Chris Johnston it. talked about uh, the Leafs being very active. And to me, that's not a one move thing. Hmm. That's not, ah, do they got to get this guy or this guy? I think there's a lot of options where they go out and make three or four moves here. 